Okay guys, I'm going to my room in the hotel. I'm going to try and get Level up. Five. Oh my god. I just got off the lift in the hotel. <laughs> and that was my view. I'm so really excited. And I think I'll just put my hand on the floor. Put this in here. I'm not looking. I'm not looking. I'm not looking in the room. I'm not looking. Right, I'll show you what I can see. Oh my god. lock my hotel rooms it makes me feel a bit funny if they're not I'm assuming that this is going to be like the shower what do I do? oh my god Jesus <laughs> what the hell <laughs> toilet shower oh I really hope that that rainbow shower head works because I've stayed in a lot of hotels recently where they've had a rainfall shower head, but it's not actually worked. So I hope that one does. And then for some reason the sink's out here. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's so funny. Shh, the hairdryer is tiny. Everything is free except the fire machine. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> oh my god. Yep. Cool. <laughs> oh wow. I know that tons of people have had these in their hotels before, but this is the first time that I've had one. And so yeah, I can change the light colours, which I'll demonstrate now for you. Red, pink-ish, green, blue, <laughs> and then um, I can do the blinds and the temperature, which I turn straight down, and I've got movies as well free movies. So I've currently got Pitch Perfect on, <laughs> just while I talk to my mum and Ronnie. Um, and now I'm gonna go head to um, the restaurant downstairs or whatever and see what they've got to eat. And I'm gonna, if they've got nothing, then I'm gonna nip over the road because I saw an m &S over the road. <laughs> and there's also an Oliver bonus, so it's a good job that I'm skint and I've paid all my bills otherwise I'd be spending money there because I did last time anyway I'm gonna go um plan for tonight is get some food shower and watch movies in bed my face is a right state it's like my makeup's just come off just everywhere my hair's a mess but I'm gonna wash it Anyway, by the way, I didn't really introduce the video. <laughs> um, I'm in London for the People's Council, which is a new project we're starting up with Signet Healthcare. Um, I'll tell you more about it tomorrow. I'll see what I can film and take pictures of and stuff tomorrow. Um, so yeah, it's like an 11 o'clock start and where I live, 
that would mean I'd have to get up at like four or three to have got there in time to do it on the same day which there's no trains at that time anyway so I came the night before um so yeah and then I go home tomorrow after the meeting um I might vlog a little bit later if not I will see you guys tomorrow and I'll find out how much I can film and if I can film at all tomorrow at the mean so hope you liked my little room tour <laughs> night because it wasn't on and um, I'm just going down the lift to check out and then I'm going to the main. I mean uh, yeah. Yeah. This man on track, right? So watch our time. All right, back in mouth. All right, yeah. So, but just just because you're here and get you chatting to each other around the table, if you just say hello if you haven't, where you come from, then we'd like you to think about on one poster here using the colour post-its, the good old post-its, eh? Using the colour post-its, just write on there a word or a statement. What is it that experts by experience bring to organisations? So, what is it they bring? What's the value of having experts by experience? Okay working in organisation, having a role. And then, on these little cut-out figures, I'm a kid at heart, you see, playing with you as a child, is good for you, okay? <laughs> on here, on this poster here, what are the essential skills and talents that an extra experience needs to have? So we're thinking today about creating the people council. We're thinking about the role of experts by experience and sickness, and we're picking all of your brains and experience to create this. So on these, one word or again, or a statement, what are the skills, the gifts, the talents that experts need to have? And then I will bring blue tap around, just stick them on there, and then on the here, the post-it notes, what is it that experts bring to organisations? Why would you have experts involved in your organisation? Okay? And then chat to each other. At 10 to, about quarter to 10 to, we'll do a round of names for the whole room and where you're from and then Raph will guide us through the morning, okay? So get chatting, keep eating biscuits and fruit. There is lots Yeah, I'm just gonna keep writing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
People that are using services at the moment, actually, if you've got some lived experience, okay, you might get us a bit more than those professionals, okay? But it's how we work together is really clear as well. A new tool for the toolbox. Like the tools, okay? <laughs> actually, you're more than you are tools, but actually, you bring a completely different, with your life experience, experts bring another flavour into the team, don't they? It's about how you work together with professionals. We're not enemies as professionals, are we? It's about how we work together, how we co produce how we design things honestly, which is partly what today's about, isn't it? It's about how can Sigma do more of that and do it better, okay? You bring that real honesty, shared experience and advice. So looking at all of this, I think an organisation would be crazy not to find a way of co-designing together to involve experts, isn't it? So as a I want to ensure that when we're inspecting Secure mental health settings, for instance, somebody who's experienced secure mental health services are able to give a view about whether these services are safe, effective, compassionate, and high quality. So they're an essential part of our inspection team. I mainly primarily do mental health inspections, but I've done a lot of you know, primary medical services, GPs, acute hospitals. The kind of experience I've got has just really been invaluable. Speaking to the uh, patients, the residents, um, especially when they re it's a really good um, place that they really like, really enjoy being there and everything else. It's just really inspiring. I think it's important because I can put myself in their shoes and service users and patients can see that and feel like they can talk more openly to me. Well, I think the thing uh, to think of here is uh, experts by experience and members of the team those teams are led by our inspectors. And it's the job of the team to assess the quality and safety of care. And they can bring another dimension. They can bring the dimension of speaking to people who have used services, speaking to family carers uh, when they're visiting services. I expect inspectors to do that as well. Uh, All the mental health substance abuse services um, across the London region. And um, it's been quite a kind of a, a developing process over the last um, couple of years. Um, and the team has taken quite a while um, to bring together and really get um, into a, a, a really effective way of working. Um, and we've gradually got there. And um, I was actually with Raf when he did his first ever uh, expert by experience inspection. Um, in the Care Quality Commission, and he was really quiet. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, quiet. Anyway, um, and I've also um, had the pleasure of working with some of our other experts by experience, and I think there's been I think there's been a real evolution um, in terms of um, the work that we do as um, a commission with experts by experience because. I think it's gone from being a sort of an expert by experience should be invited to join an inspection um, and you know obviously uh, what they bring is very important to uh, what I hope uh, is it now feels like a real sort of partnership. Um, a vision for and actually duly shared values with myself and some of the best practice that I've picked up around the country doing inspections with the CQC was actually, we've got experts by experience working with CQC. I can work on a strategic level with Julie as an expert by experience, but there's so many things, as Wayne said earlier, for experts by experience to get involved in, that actually we need an expert by experience at every hospital. Mm -hmm. And um, there's no other better people to, to have that than actual people who have used those services. So if you don't mind me saying, Ben, you've been discharged how long ago now? Nearly a month. Maybe a month, and uh, already Ben's getting involved in some work. We went to the NHS England workshop the other day. Um, you've come here today, and hopefully, we're going to get you a role at, at the hospital that you were discharged from. Kate, if you don't mind me saying, you're getting um, discharged in, in August, and you're going to be hoping to come back to the hospital and, and be the expert by experience for your hospital. So, that's where we, where we really want to get to, and just replicate that for every hospital and ensure that, that people are heard from a local level all the way to a strategic level. And there's going to be different staff on, on different days. So actually have service users on the ground 
feeding back to me and telling me, oh, you know what, on Wednesday, on Friday, and Saturday, you know, the, 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 the lounge was locked and we weren't allowed hot drinks at night time. And as the least restrictive champion, they're writing that down, feeding that information back to me. We can go back, see who was on the rota. And it's not about catching staff out and you know, disciplinary hearings, but about actually communicating with them, letting them know what we're doing, letting them know um, that actually we should be treating people in the least restrictive environment and actually working with them to, to, to do that. And the, the Signet People's Council, if you, if you have a look, it's really a channel of information from the ward all the way to the board. Because and that's the one bit missing here, is that for the board, yeah. this, the, mm -hmm. the crucial thing that Julie's stressing is, is the communication between the executive board yeah. and this. Is and it's probably it's two way alongside yeah. rather than... Yeah, yeah. there must be some things that yeah. the management board would be with more responsible for, but we want that joint Precisely. backwards and forwards. So what will the People's Council do? So, as we said, gather feedback from the board. What could the People's Council do? Ali, you're like my mum. Sorry. Probably old enough. She was on Channel 4 last night, Channel 4 News actually. What were you doing? Okay. Okay. Ensuring people use signet services and their carers are heard at all levels of the organisation. That was for you, Dave. Work with and influence the executive management board. Share best practice across hospitals. Co produce policies and procedures. Challenge and support the organisation to do better. Come up with innovative projects and ideas. You know, us experts by experience are renowned for coming up with, with, with new ideas and stuff. Mm. Review complaints where there are themes and develop s solutions. So, you know, sometimes if there's an issue in a hospital, you just think, okay, why don't we try this? Why don't we try that? And, 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 and those work quite well. I'm going to let Judy speak a little bit about co-production because... Um, <laughs> yeah. um, together I, is the only way we can choose. Together is the only way we can choose. I'm going to... We went... Um, we kind of thought about the kind of people who were being excluded from that service and actively sought them. So they weren't young people who were using CAM services, they weren't using it because they couldn't get in. Um, and, and actually that group grew into something called Article 12, which um, uh, you know, has now got a very kind of uh, long history of being the um, young people's um, panel that, that works in, in one of the big uh, local trusts. So how can you support the experts to bring their unique set of skills and talents into Signet and help improve the way Signet works for better outcomes for people, yeah? So, I'm going to give you a piece of flip chart paper, I think, um, but I would like you to have a, have a random discussion to about 25 past. I'll then say, right, can you write down your top five to ten things, just really clearly on a piece of flip chart. Chop, if you've only got two, that's fine but no more than 10, so then we can take those back and I can hand them over to Raph and Julie and Sally and everyone and it, it's, it's stuff you're really contributing to the future, yeah? So random conversation, I'll let you have that till 25 past, then I'll bring you a sheet of paper and ask you to write one to 10, no more than 10 and, ideas. And, and Sally, guys, just to say as well, we're more than aware that this will take more than an hour to do, but today's really just about brainstorming, coming with ideas, and just having an idea of where we're going to move forward. Absolutely. And um, we're, we're, we're more than aware that, that this needs much more time and more effort Absolutely. and moving forward. It's a start, isn't it? Yeah. Good. We're going to work bridge. It's no good you uh, actually trying to video that through the window because the windows in the back are tinted and they won't, they won't show up. Properly. I've got a good video, actually. <laughs> You'd be surprised, it's, it's funny. A lot of people try to take photographs of it. helicopters now. <laughs> 